here, my dear friends, is where Don Bosco died. In this place is where this great saint breathed his last. And the words that he told his young people are here. The aspect of Toti in paradise. I wait for you all in paradise. Telling his boys, the boys for whom he spent his whole life. We are in the room of Don Bosco. And behind the camera is um, Father Ruben, um, a selection of, of Don Bosco, a missionary, a great missionary who has worked in East Africa. And uh, let's move the other side to see properly what we are actually talking about. Come, come with me. Come with me this side so that um, you know what we are talking about. He died there. The Bosco died there. But the bed that he died on is right here. That is the bed that Don Bosco died on that you are seeing right here. It is a bed where the great saint of the world of the young died in 1888 on January 31st at 04 hours. 04 hours, that is 4 a.m. That's when Don Bosco went to heaven. Thank you so much and God bless you. This was on the day of the canonization of Don Bosco in 1934. The day Don Bosco was canonized, all the poor and rich alike gathered. The nobles, all the big people you can think of, gathered to witness the canonization of this great saint as his remains are carried in honor. And people of all walks of life were there for the canonization of this great saint. And it was this casket that was used to carry the body of Don Bosco, the remains of Don Bosco. This casket was made by the Salesians. And the little angel image that you see here is the image of a child who was used to make this, um, this casket. And this child died a few months ago. Somebody who was at the time of the canonization of Don Bosco in 1934, died a few months ago in his 90s. So here now we have the order of congregations from the time of Don Bosco making up the Salesian family as we have it today with the so many groups that have come up from the spirit of this great man called St. John Bosco. We have a great number of groups of families that are attached to St. John Bosco. We have 32 of them and more are coming definitely as the spirit of Don Bosco spreads throughout the world. Father Eustace Siame. We are in the first building that Don Bosco ever made. Mind you, Don Bosco himself shifted to this place in 1844, years after his ordination. He shifted to this place and he wanted to fulfill the dream, the dream that he had when he was very young, at the age of nine and uh, where he was guided by Our Lady that he was going to change those boys from the streets that were represented by the wolves to turn them into sheep. He didn't have enough money, but he managed to do something. What we are seeing here is a storeroom here, though it's not very clear, and um, we are seeing here 
the first dime. Let's go to the next dime. The first, the, the first dime, the first man dining that hundred and more children, over 200 boys, would use to have their meals. And all of them were cut and for from here. The wars How did Don Luther construct these wars? He did this by empowering the young people that he had. And those young people were told by Don Bosco, please go out there in the streets and get some rock, some stone, so that we may build. And those young boys were despised by others that they couldn't do anything, they were good for nothing, started sensing their, their value through the help of Don Bosco. And what you are seeing here are the rocks put together by Don Bosco with the help of the boys to make the structure so that the boys themselves can say, I contributed something, I did something. Don Bosco, this was my rock. Don Bosco, I brought this. Those little boys started developing their esteem, their self-esteem through the help of Don Bosco, a great saint indeed. The room we are in now was a wine press. And in this wine press, Don Bosco and his boys used to make the wine that would be used for every meal. Mind you, wine for the Italians is part of the meals. And a meal without wine would not be complete. It would not be complete. So bread and wine. And this gives you an idea of how even the People at the time of Jesus valued wine and bread. And uh, remember that this reminds us of chapter 2 of John, from verse 1 to 11, the wedding at Cana. And who was there to provide that wine? Our Lady, who said to Jesus, They have no wine. And for that reason, this room has remained with various images of Our Lady, and these images come from the countries where the Salishans of Don Bosco are working, the, the, the various statues of our Blessed Virgin Mary. Uh, as you can see, there are all different statues. Just to remind you, we are in the basement, the first room the first building that Don Bosco made. And in this basement are all these things that I'm explaining to you now. You are seeing all these statues of our Blessed Virgin Mary from various parts of the world, from Asia, from Africa. As you can see, there's one here from Africa and Asia up here in we have various statues representing the various places where the civilizations of Don Bosco are actually working. And they are all placed in this basement, which used to be a place for making wine, the winery. And um, for your information, all these statues that you are seeing came much later. And we have one original statue that was there from the time of the Muslim. And we go to that statue from there. The lighting is not very, very good, but at least we can see. This is Our Lady's statue that Don Bosco himself had in this room where the young people could get abundant wine through our Blessed Mother Mary, who taught Don Bosco that I will help you. Jesus gave Don Bosco this woman in the dream at night. This woman will help you. And indeed, she did help. And indeed, she did help to the end of Don Bosco's life.